We have sound, okay. I'm going to have to do that all again, aren't I? Okay, hang on, wait a minute. We'll start, and then I'll edit that bit out. Wait a minute, we'll go back to this. G'day, this is Steve Wood, Working Masterclass. Hope you can hear me now. Thanks for the interjection. It seems to be a daily thing, doesn't it? Anyway. I'm Steve Hay, this is Woodworking Masterclass. If you're new to the workshop, I'm thinking of calling it A Day in the Shed with Steve because what I'm doing, instead of a specific project, project for, um, 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 for streaming, I've just got to turn that amplifier over there. I've had journey belting out in the shed. Oh, it's been really good. Get the old blood pumping and everything. We'll turn that down. Um, you're actually in my workshop as I'm working and I'm doing real jobs, I'm not doing jobs just for a stream or just for a project or just for a video. So if you see me jumping from job to job to job, that's the way it happens in a real life shed. Shop, workshop, whatever you want to call it. Because if you glued something up, you can't be sitting around there waiting for that to dry. You've got to get on to something else. And believe me, I've always got something to do. So, I made a list of things I'm going to do. I'll get to the good days in a minute. I've just got to retrack on what I did when I didn't speak when I was speaking. You couldn't hear me. Uh, let's see. Got these to do. I've got a, a trick there that I thought of last night and went, boop. Why didn't I do that to start with? Could have saved me some time. I've machined all the Queensland walnut up to make plinths, <laughs> these things, to go on the bottom of these boxes. I've got some solid edging to put on one box. Then we'll... Round, excuse me, round them over on the router and get them ready for cutting the tops off, which we'll cut the tops off tomorrow. Uh, I've got to put bow ties or butterfly joints in this picture frame. We finished just at the close of the stream yesterday. What else have I got? I've got another chair to pull apart and fix. Um, the ionising solution that we did to turn timber black it's just about finished, so I'm going to decant that in the bottles and we'll do that and make a heck of a mess. And you can watch me gagging on the fumes, which is always fun. Oh, and that chopping board, this one here, that we made the other day. Yeah, what was that? Oh, my rattle board, um, which is that one. Really not happy with it. Don't like that, so I'm going to fix those mistakes and get rid of all that bog. It was just annoying me. It can either be a... A board I'll throw out in the barbecue and we'll use, or it'll be one I can fix up and sell, which would be lovely. All right, so that's just about exactly what I said before. So let's go back. Dear, oh dear. Da -da -da -da. Jared, you were first in. Oh, that was it. Yeah, hard energy out to you, Randy. Thank you so much for the membership. That's what I said. Um, you can join the Woodworking Masterclass channel. And at the moment, I'm totally honest, I haven't got time for special perks, but know that you're helping me out greatly. And anything I do get from YouTube, I just channel straight back into the channel, whether it's buying materials, updating my uh, uh, software gear or camera gear, buying batteries, which as soon as I finish my lockdown period, I'm going to quickly dash out and get some batteries um, because I've got, enough, I've got enough to do me for another 10 days. So we're right. So I'll buy batteries as well. Ah, so good morning, Jared. Good morning, Wombat. Good morning, Trevor. Trevor, I did say I loved that little thing you put up on Facebook with that lady going for a job interview. Just, just for those of you that have missed it, I thought it was very good. It was about 1940s. This lady sitting at a desk and there's a male chauvinist um, sitting there interviewing her and says, look, I'm really looking for someone who can take the place and do the work of six men. And the lady goes, oh, that's a pity. I was hoping for a full-time job. <laughs> well, get a chuckle out of that. I did. Um, so who have we got? Uh, da -da -da -da. Chad, g'day. Max, g'day. Peter Shane, g'day. Um, uh, Miles, g'day. David, Sheridan, g'day. Ray, g'day. Tango, g'day. James, g'day. Six knots, Louise. Jeff. This thing's going slow and then it's going really fast. What do I get? I got Jeff. T-Bone. Lucas. That's it. We're all in. 
And that's chomping back. It's not. I don't like it, Max. I'm going to fix it. In fact, tell you what, let's fix it right away because I'm not happy with it. Get it out of the way and then we'll come back and do something else. So what I'm going to do, uh, those of you that didn't see the debacle and horrible mess that I made, that's the chopping board there. It's end grain blackwood with a jarrah inlay. And when I rounded over the edges, I thought, oh, that looked nice. So I put a big round over bit and it ripped all sorts of bits out, which are filled with bog, which I don't like at all. So I'm going to go and fix that. And so not only <laughs> the benefit of this is you watch me make great stuff ups, but on the positive side, you also see how I can fix it. And generally, when I make a mess of something, I don't stop and throw my hands up in the air or throw it at the wall and go, ah, I just keep going. And while I'm doing it, how can I fix that? Because that's what woodworking is all about. It's not sitting down and, oh, we're going to have Susie's positive saying of the day. I don't know what that is. She said she'd be down later on. Um, yeah, a lot of people, it's got to be perfect. It's got to be, no, it doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to be finished. All right, so what I'm going to do is go over to the table saw and I think I'm going to take about three mil off. Each side, which is the was actually two mil blade in there, so it's a little bit under the width of the blade, and we'll get rid of that unsightly bog out of there, or wood putty, or filler, or mistake cover, or upper, or whatever you want to call it. So I've I've set that width. Ooh, hang on, I'm just throwing a camera over. Here, so you can. <laughs> That's handy. Yeah, put, put in the camera cable right over the blade. <laughs> Did you see that? Look at that, wasn't it? Um, which one do we want? We want that one. Okay. So we're looking too far up. So we got a little bit further down. There you go. So I've just got the width of the blade and. <laughs> That's terrific. I just put the camera exactly where the board's going to come out of the table. So we'll just change that angle a bit. There you go. I should be pretty right with that. All right. So I'm just going to nudge that along a bit. Whack the dusty on. Smack that on. Let's crank it up a bit on it. So just above. And here we go. And look at that. Got rid of all that unsightly rubbish. So we'll do the same to the other side. Wait until it stops. Hello, Bob. Hello. How are you saying hello? Hello. Hello. You're going to come up? Come here. Come here. Where are you? No, there's no food under there. Goodness gracious. Get your tail out of the way. Oh, dear. Okay. Important thing when you do this, remember to move. Turn that off for a tick. To move the fence over, or you will get a very subtle reminder from the saw blade telling you that your fence is in the way. Uh. 
Um, that's, that's what a reminder looks like, just in case you're wondering. <coughs> okay. So again, I just want the width of the blade. a grotty. No, I'm not reaching over the table saw until I get, until <laughs> the blade stops. There we go. Oh. Hang on to your lunch or breakfast because you're going to get vertigo. Oh. Hang on, I'll do that. There you go. You, you won't get sick then. Or maybe not as. Okay. So when I um, clear the decks a bit, I'll re-sand that. And it looks, it'll look much nicer because it won't have the dreaded bog all the way around it. And what I've decided in, in future ones is I'm just going to put a small radius like that over it. I won't put a, a big radius. So... There you go. All right, g'day. Prunella, how are you? Sneaking in there. I, did, I know you're a good sneak. You told me that. Uh, where are we? Oh, do -do 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 -do. G'day, Mark. What makes it rattle? That's my secret. Um, I, I just wanted to come up with something that was a little bit quirky and a little bit different that people, you know, you say, is it a genuine, is it a genuine board? Oh, speaking of which, this is what I got in the mail the other day. Um, and yeah, I just put a couple of rattly things. I've got to have at least one secret in my life. There's, just got that made the other day, just arrived in the post yesterday. Woodworking Masterclass Originals by Steve Hay. So it's a, a brand. What I'm going to do, <coughs> that's sawdust, don't panic. What I'm going to do, oh, speaking of, I'm digressing, yes. I woke up this morning and I was in a little bit of a panic. Oh, Bob's left me. Um, yeah, I had a really dry, sore throat. My eyes were puffed up. I felt a little tightness in the chest. <laughs> oh, no, no. And then I realised, you idiot. When I cleaned the shed up last night, the vacuum bag was full. They had a lot of dust in it and I emptied it. Normally I throw it into the trailer and then go to the tip. But I emptied it into the bin next to my bench and of course all the dust came up. That's what it was. It was dust. Um, yeah, so what I'm going to do is make... I don't know if I can stream it, but I'll definitely do a video of it. I'm going to make a branding handle for it. So I'll get a bit of, I don't know... Uh, 12 mil or 10 mil, mostly 12 mil mile steel, drill it out, tap it. I don't mean tap it like that, I mean tap it with a thread tap and um, then turn the handle. So I'll video that and if it's all done by tomorrow or the next day, we'll go live and uh, I'll run the video of that. So I'm looking forward to trying that out. It's going to be really kill. Oh dear. Uh, yeah, uh, there's a lot of them. It's an acacia, and there's a lot of different blackwoods out there. There's Queensland blackwood, there's black wattle, there is Tasmanian blackwood, um, 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 oh, Yarran, Balyaka, yeah, all, all the same type of thing. 
but slightly different. And again, as with trees, you can get identical trees but grown in different soil or give you different characteristics, which is good. Do you make your own tools? I do for blacksmithing, a lot of them, uh, six knots. Uh, do I make many hand, uh, woodworking tools? No. I make new handles for them because I'm forever breaking handles. But a lot of my blacksmithing tools I make myself. Yeah, they tell me the streets are empty everywhere, Mark. Well, there you, you got sunshine. You said it was raining. Hello, Bob, you're back again. No, I haven't started me brekkie yet. Oh, here comes the boss. Oh, God, you just wreck things. I don't care. What, what's the matter? Yeah, the bed early. Oh, you should have seen the look I just got. But I'll give her a cup of tea this morning and, and a couple of Tim Tams. You were early. Yeah, well. Did you want to get it over and done with? I figured Ooh. I should because I've got housework to do. Yeah, in the kitchen. Woman, kitchen. Yeah, now, no. Make no, trifle. I'm pregnant. No. Whoa. Family show. Uh, <laughs> how come we got five sons but you only had three? Anyway, don't know. I'm not going there. It's one of those things. Um, yeah, trifles. They're going, aren't they? They are. So we're going to. <laughs> he makes these big bowls of trifle and they don't last a day. Between Anthony and I, I think we scoff a lot. I think so. It's good. Hang on, who's saying? It's got to, I, just, I just got to catch up with everyone. Uh, the backer, good day, mate. Welcome. Steve, I'm going through a cupboard and found an old Brisbane 33 DVD of yours. If you remember, I got it from Gregory's when I picked up. Oh, right. That was a long time ago. There you go. Reginald, g'day. Oh, here we go. That's what I was looking for. There you go. Prunella says hi. Um, Lucas says hi. Uh, Ray says good day. Max says good morning. Geez, you're formal, Max. You call her Mrs. Hay, she wouldn't turn around in the supermarket. In fact, she, she wouldn't go to a supermarket now, would she? Not at the moment. Um, yeah, I, I, no, I, I don't think you can dig a hole in it. Oh, mate, I can. I can dig that deep. I'll come out the other end. <laughs> no, I don't want to go there, Ray. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Uh, Lucas wants to live here and be my apprentice. Well, there's another one we can feed. We've only got... Just adopt another one. Well, what's that? We'll have ten here. Ten. Can yeah. Four, four, four dogs. And then if we've got some friends that are in a... live in a van, yeah. in a caravan park, and if they get booted out, they're coming, then we'll have twelve. <laughs> Lucky we've got a bit of space, Yeah, hey? I reckon. We keep uh, going we'll have no space of our own. Yeah, indeed. Um, oh, there you go. Get on you, six knots. That's it. We're knocking you. No, no, that doesn't sound, that doesn't sound very nice. That, that doesn't sound very nice, does it? We're knocking you up. No, all right. Um, what, I'm hitting you up. Locking <laughs> me up is not a choice either. I'm not locking you up. I'm not knocking you up. I'm hitting you up. Okay, all right. You up for? Six knots. Where are the scones, Sue? What about, what about we have in about an hour, nice Six plate scones. of scones, right. whipped cream, because yeah. we've got strawberry jam, we've got yeah. strawberry jam, and, <laughs> and even a cup of coffee. If you're lucky. I love you, because you're just the bestest wife. You're a crawler. Yeah, it works. Uh, <laughs> no, she doesn't, Max. We, we don't. Oh, look, I don't like that. I don't like the aftertaste. But there you go. Oh, dear, no, uh, oh, see, Mac, uh, Mark, straight to the point. Stop stuffing around. What have you created today, Sue? Oh, <laughs> hey, Luke's a professional chef. Mate, come over here oh, and I'll, I'll give you a chopping board. I'll make a chopping I even make some, we'll, we'll make some carving knives for you. Mm. There you go. My nephew's a chef too, but he's not working at the moment. No, that's a bit sad. He just got married. Yeah, got married weeks three weeks ago and him and his wife both work at the same restaurant and they've shut down. Oh, terrible. Um, yeah, no, Susie's covered, honestly, Ray. I'll take you out. One of these days I'll do a video of her sewing room. If Can a fabric... Can No. If, <laughs> I've got a reputation. <laughs> if material shop ever ran out of stock, they could buy from Susie 
And if the supermarkets ever ran out, they could ring Susie up and she could supply them. Because we have a terrific... We always have, haven't we? Yeah. See, we grew up with floods and fires and yeah. stuff. Anyway, look, I, oh, OK. Ah, oh, thanks, Prunella. She's, she's nice. Oh, yeah. <coughs> oh, that's nice. OK, you ready? I'm moving my breakfast so I don't dip the end in it. Jeff reckon I should make a frame for everyone. I haven't got that much time. There you go. It'll probably end up in a quilt or wall hanging. There you go. We'll, we'll auction it. <laughs> there you go. Do small things with great love. Isn't that good? That is cool. That's it. Do small things with great love. Okay. And I think that leads in very nicely to just little scones with a little bit of cream on the side and a little cup of coffee. <laughs> love that look, you know. She's developed that over 42 years. 44. Jeez, we're going for 44. Mm -hmm. Hey, if we met on that blind date and you said that, I don't know if I would have believed him. But still, okay. I know a joke around, but she's the one that's got the patience, not me. Okay. All right, what have we got there? What else you got? We have a single bag quilt. I don't know how you're going to do this, honey. Well, oh, I like that one. Yeah, you grab that corner and, and we drop it so it doesn't touch the floor. There you go. There you go. That's um, mother and babies, isn't it? Yeah. It's giraffes and heifer lumps and baboons bears. and tigeras. What's that one over there? Oh, it's a bear. There you go. Hang on, move over here and we'll give them a shot of the panels. Close up. Of the panels. No, you hold it. I'll do the doofadoo. They're the bears. No, 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 you just hold it still and let me put the camera on it. Because we'll be... There you go. They're the bears. And over there we've got monkeys. And then we got. No, move back a bit. Heifer lumps. And towards you. Little stripy horses. Zebras. That's it. And then my favourite is the giraffes. And that uh, you pull. There you go. What are they? Are they more bears? They're more bears. Oh, you got two bears on there. Yeah. There you go. So, and tomorrow. I'll and bring she's got to get close. And tomorrow, here you go. On. I'll bring a reading pillow. Uh, reading pillows are really fashionable at the moment. Especially if you're locked in. Yeah, all that too. Can people hear me? Oh. Yeah, reading pillows are really fashionable at the moment, which is what I'll bring down tomorrow. Um, the kids just love them. They put them on the lounge, on their bed, put their books in them. Or for the oldies, you can put your remote control... Well, can you classify oldies? Are we there yet? <laughs> Almost. <laughs> um, we'll bring them down tomorrow. I will. So you can put your remote controls in them. That's a good... Well, don't, don't do them as reading pillows. Do them as remote control pillows. Yeah. And then you go, where's the remote control? And you sit down on the cushion. And you, oh, I found it. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. All right, give us Mooch. Not you, you bag of fleas. No, no. no. That, I'm talking to the dog, all right? Gee. <laughs> Thanks, Alan. Yeah, you can make some scones, eh? Oh, all right, I'll make some. Because Louise told me I should have a break so everyone can go and get a coffee in the tin tan. Oh, OK. <laughs> oh, dear. All right. Catch you later, darling. Oh, no. Is Nancy out of bed yet? No. This has made no difference to him at all, has it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, do you want to read the comments? Oh, tell me. No, all right, I'll do it. Uh, there, today's positive. Amazing job, Sue. Profound. Very nice and thoughtful, said Mark. Uh, Randy says the US now has more cases. Oh, okay. Um, Max says very true. T Dog says nice. Um, Louise says, Sue, can you embroidery blowing towel? Hey? Can you embroider blowing towel for my daughter with her mane on it? I'm not going there. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I can do a 
she, she can. And actually, yeah, my son does the digitising. Uh, Jono, he's the one that's not well, but update on him, he's feeling a lot better. Yeah. He was throwing his heart up yesterday, but he's feeling a lot better today. Oh, that's cute. So cute. Awesome. That's cute. Adorable. Ray goes, I want... <laughs> Brian's just popped in. Morning. Nice work, Sue. Max says, your sewing machine, that is magic. We'll take it up. We'll, we'll do it. Yeah. have it up there one day. Hello, Steve. Nice um, little you there. Dina. G'day, mate. Welcome to the workshop. And welcome to Tea Dog, too. Um... That's it. That's it. All right. No one wants to talk to you. Yeah, she said, stick around. She'll bring scones down later on. Oh, yes, that was a good idea, Louise. I like that. Now I've forgotten what the heck I was doing. What? Oh, that's right. I did the chombo. All right. Um, oh, did I put me... I didn't put me glue pot on. I meant to. Which means I'll do this job. Oh, and actually, I'll... Yeah, I'll do this job first. And this is, oh, yuck. That's the frame we made yesterday. We did the moulding. Where is it? Here we did. We did the moulding the day before and then we made that frame up yesterday. So what we're going to do now is put butterflies or uh, bow tie joints in the back because that's only a butt joint. So that'll strengthen that. So we'll do... That, but first of all, I'll cut these out. That's what I'll do. Oh dear. I'll leave that, that, don't need that. Anyone want some cedar? Uh, oh dear. Hoi! Couldn't go there. No, Bob, that's just settle, petal. All right. Just, I've still got that. I'm going to put that in. Um, that was off of the, the picture frame. I'm going to put that in. Whatever I said. Epoxy. That'll be cool. We'll see what that'll do. Oh, dear. It's all happening. It's another frame I did yesterday. That other chair I pulled the clamps off, so it's good to go. I'm going to have a mouthful of me breakfast that I actually put in the bowl two hours ago. <laughs> I'm sorry, Bob. I don't mean to laugh at you, but it's just... Oh, but, 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 but. You, you get the dregs. Let me have the top part. You, then you can have the bottom part, right? Fair dinkum. Mmm. Oh. Where's my knife? <coughs> These things I'm doing here those of you that aren't aware, they're to go in the box lid. Uh, Susie's embroidering this, and that will sit in the there. This goes over the top like that. So the challenge that I have is with this flocking here, how do I flock it without getting paint all over here? So I worked that out this morning. I thought, well, why don't I do that? But first of all, I've got to cut these bits out. This is the production side of woodworking. They don't have to be um, precisely cut out because I can clean them up on a, a bobbin sander I have over yonder. Um, well, well, where's my mouse gone? See you in the back, I'll see you when you get back. Oh, Sue makes a, a bowling towel. All right, bowling towel. Yes, yes, we can do that. Um, <laughs> funny 
you should mention that, Ray, about a broken screen. <laughs> oh, come on. Oh, you can't see it on that one. Yeah, but my, my screen is broken too. There you go. And that was, I had a screw in the pocket. And I inadvertently sat down on it. It's the first time ever I think I've ever put my phone in my back pocket. Normally I put it in the, you know, the front pockets. But there you go. But the phone still works, so really, who cares? G'day, Frank, how are you, mate? Thank you for that the other day. Ringing up and telling me that I had no sound. We had the same problem this morning. <laughs> but oh, I'll get it right one day. Uh, what have we got? Um, that's it, lemonade scones. That's the one she makes, lemonade scones. Ah, oh, dear, oh dear. Um, where are we up to? Um, what's Con's recipe? Flour? Oh, gee, you've got a good memory. Ah, <laughs> oh, dear. I'm just getting down here. Yeah, they look good when they're all finished. In fact, they look even better when they're not here. But there you go, that happens. It's all good. This um, this veneer too, when it's like that, it, it just it cuts like suede. It's really quite weird stuff. Oh, it doesn't happen too often, T Dog. I tell you, having the clean bench, you ask you ask the regulars. But I must admit. Since I've been streaming every day, I've been cleaning up every night. And I should do something with all these hearts, shouldn't I? I might do that. I might, all right, I might cut out a little bit more accurately. And uh, might do something with those hearts. I don't know what. But we might. Yeah, I could have saved myself a whole heap of trouble if I had done what I'm going to do next with these. And that is, I should, before, don't you love should off with hindsight? I should have um, covered them in newspaper and glued the newspaper in on and then cut them out and they would have been a lot more stable and I wouldn't have had chip out. But see, someone said to the other day, oh, it's good to learn things. I said, yeah, I keep learning things I've forgotten. And that was a process I used to use years ago. And uh, because I haven't done it for so long, I had forgotten. Which happens to the best of us. <sighs> yeah, I know, he's, he's under fear. He's still looking at me, hopefully. Mm. Yeah, but hey, there's an idea. Maybe coasters. Who knows? Well, if anyone wants a heart, I'll send them to you. You can have my heart with high glue on it. I suppose you can make a clock face. What's that one, Ray? What do you got up there? Hang on, I'm just having a look at a picture of Ray's. Oh, that's nice. But they're all the same colour and all the same size. But I like that, Ray. That's a good idea. Uh, a mural even. Yep. Silver. <laughs> Th thank you. And may they do the same for you. Ah, it's all good. All good, mate. 
It, it is funny. I, I'll, I mean, those of you that know I do sort of tell it like it is. And when I first started and I decided I was going to do continual streams every day, uh, by about day three, I thought, you're stupid, you're an old man. You can't do it. But you people in the chat room really energised me. And now I wake up and instead of going, oh, I've got a stream, I go, oh, awesome. What have I got to do today? Have I got enough to keep going? And you know, so Your energy is appreciated. And as well as the wonderful emails I'm getting, messages on, on Facebook, on Messenger, um, and in the comments of the whoop, YouTube um, section, it is inspiring me. So thank you and keep it up. If you are new to the channel and you, you like what you see, I'd really appreciate it if you hit the subscribe button. That would be lovely. Uh, and if you're new to this channel too, or even if you're, I was going to say old, but I don't mean that. If you're a regular, if you've got any woodworking questions or you might be working on a project and you, you're stuck or you want to know how to do something, just hook in and ask and uh, I will do my best to either give you my opinion or we can do a live demonstration. As we did the other day with Jake, wanted to know how to square a board up with a number four plane. So I'll just stop what I'm doing and look at that. All my hearts to you. Um, and we'll do it. So if there's anything you want to know, see, or have explained, and I am able to do that, I will do my very best. Even my high glue is not quite, not quite melted enough yet. So what we'll do is we'll move on to this one and we'll do a couple of bow ties. <coughs> do, do, do. That, by the way, that I was using is this little chappy here. Which, 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 which? Oh, let's bring that around. That's not going to work today. Is it? Oh, sorry, mate. Sorry. Here you go. Um, that's it. It's from Sweden. Nobex. I don't know what it's called. Picture framing clamp. There you go. And it's great for any polygons that you're doing. You just keep on adding sides. Now, am I going to use that again? No, I won't. Not today. I will put it away where it lives. There you go. Done. Yes, Bob. You're doing a good job sweeping the floor with your tail. Okay. Now, I might have to uh, swivel that around that way. Make sure it's on the bench. I don't want it falling off. So it'll make a heck of a clatter. Okay. So, I'll just clean these up a little bit with the sander. Don't know what I've got on there. It might be 100 grit. Useless, absolute useless paper, this. It's a decent brand, Hermes. It's a good brand. I like Hermes. The reason I like it, it's got all these holes. Where are we? There you go. It's got all the holes. You don't have to line it up with anything specific. And the Merca, Merca sander I'm using, it's got multi holes. So you just pop it on there and away you go.
Look how quickly that cleans that up. Whoop! If that ever happens and you rip a bit of paper, that was my fault, I put a pointy bit into it, don't continue using it because it will wreck your job. Uh, I know I said I hated this brand, but it's the one on top, so I'll use it. And hopefully I'll use them all up and I'll never have to use them again. So we'll start working on that. But what this is for, this is to put this in, which was, I think it was the first one she, she'd done a few and then this was the first one she actually brought down as a show and tell. Uh, that one. She, Susie. So, and we'll do this... Um, brown I think later on and I've still got to find the <coughs> still got to find the glass well I know where the glass is it's just getting to it that's the problem all right now how big uh, do I want these bow ties yeah mate it's all right it's all right everything's good uh, I'm just looking for uh, a lit. Ah, no, this. I just want a bit of paperback. Paperback veneer. Let's grab a bit out. Yeah, the lit. Uh, yeah. That was a strong wolf. I'll point out so I can go, woof. This might be a show of unappreciation. So now I'm just going to see about what size I want. <coughs> um, oh, blood so early in the day. I wonder when I did that. Okay, we'll do it on this one then. Yeah, that's big enough. Okie dokie. So, do do do. Ma -de 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 -dum -dum. Oops. Wrong one, Huey. I don't know which way the grain's going on this. A bit bigger. <clears throat> yes, I cut my own glass, T-Bone. I've got a great circle cutter too for glass. It's awesome. Anyway, I 
don't think we've got any glass here at the moment. Um, whoa. <laughs> I've got to I've got to see where we were up to. He gets exercise. Do you know how many, how many calories you burn when you're big? <laughs> That's what Sue says about me, Max. Every time I go, I'm getting fat. She says, all right, I like it. Well, it's her fault I get fat because she's a good cook. Oh, that was ages ago. Okay. Hang on, I'm trying to catch up. Ah, that doesn't sound good, Silver. Yeah, I'll say, okay, T-Bone will answer that one. Oh, that's nice. Thanks, Max. Oh, thanks. Uh, thanks, Silver. Appreciate that. All right. Um, oh, yeah, I'll cut a little bit of glass later. I'll find some. I, the big sheet glasses that I've got, it's on a pallet up in um, oh, another shed. But it's got all sorts of kid stuff over it at the moment. And when, if they, when they all come back, I want a metric one. Um, it'll most likely have more rubbish on it. Okay, what have we got there? Close enough, <coughs> close enough to <laughs> 20 mil. Oh, dear. Okay, we'll go. We'll go there, and that's what we'll do. And we'll go in that far. Move that to one side. And we'll cut down there. Whatever angle you like, I don't care. But once you pick an angle, I'm, I'm going to be, try to be precise here. Once, yeah, once you pick an angle, I'll use it. Dun -dum, ba -da -ba -dum. Okay, so we got that there, that there. Then we've got to go out the other way. <coughs> that way, like that. And then. Down that way. And whatever that is, we'll put on the other side. No, it's about 13, 14 mil. That's close enough. Oh, dear. All right. That's water in a bit. Oh, we can bring that in. One length. Okay. He 
you got a double here. Oh, I just had to check what camera was on. Okay. Where, where is it? There it is. That's the little bow tie. So we'll go and cut a few of those. <clears throat> I don't know how deep I want them. I suppose... Uh, if we go 10 mil in, so if I cut them at 12 mil, I'll just nip out, see if I can find some 12 mil stock. And I might even have some over here. Not, oh, what's that? That's close. That's close. That's about 18 mil, I reckon. It is. All right, well, we'll cut that down to 12 mil. And we'll have a strip of it. Which is going to be that wide. So we'll go over the bandsaw. And how many do I want? Only one, four. One. Two, three, four. Oh, okay, you need that much. Cut that off there. All right, let's go to the bandsaw. <clears throat> um, I was about to ask, how do you do bow ties in wood? Now I'm about, well, the, <laughs> we both are, Max. I'm trying to think the last bow tie I did. It'd be a couple of years ago too, I think. Hey, who's had that dream where you're flying? It is awesome. You're only about that high with mine. I'm about that high off the ground, but you just go. Oh, love it. Mm. Mate, Brian, you got a sense of humor you can get down the shed? You're in front. Oh, thanks, Julian. Yeah, they're genuine too, mate. They are genuine old man noises. Oh, thanks, Brian. I'll go and have a check. Okay, I will just go and check. But thank you, Brian, for your vigilance. Oh, of course, I've lost my mirror, so I can't have a look. Where'd I put my mirror now? It usually, usually hangs up. Hang on, I'll check this one. This is the one that's going to go first, I think. Yeah, that's good. And where's my blinking mirror gone? I saw it all. I'll stand on something. Yeah. If you hear a crash, I was trying to fly. <sighs> yep, that's on two bars as well. So we're looking good. We're looking good. But I appreciate that. Keep me, keep me on my toes. Keep me honest. Where are we going to go? We're going to go over to the bamfield, aren't we? All right. And... I was going to mark that down there. These are very handy marking gauges. But I'll show you my favourite one. Colin, you make, you make a lovely marking gauge. That is my all-time favourite marking gauge. Colin Clinton one. You can get them from H&T Gordon, but lovely and it's beautiful cutter blade in there. So I just thought I'd share that because it just stuck into my head. Okay, let's go over and cut this muck up on the mock up, not muck up, on the bandsaw. Yeah, 
There we go. Go get that bit of oak cut up too, sooner or later. I'm gonna have to do that. Leave that now because I've got more chairs to do and that bit of oak. I don't know what that's doing there. You can go over there. Okie dokie. I'm not going to bother turning the dusty on just for this. Make two lots, because I've I've confidence on this one of them up. Love that foot break. Okay, now we'll get these and we'll draw these on. And they don't have to be super precise because each one you're going to do, you're going to cut accordingly. It's quite a nice joint actually if you've got, well, you know, with picture frames or you might have a table or something that's got a, a split in it and you want to use it, but you don't want to put a big timber wedge in there or you don't want to fill it with epoxy or whatever. So you um, just make one of these up in the contrasting timber <coughs> and fit in my, one of my workbenches up in the wood turning shed. I've got them in there. Okay, here we go. One.
You'll be very careful when you do that, but I'm going very slowly and it's soft timber, so providing you aware of that, very light pressure. So if you put a lot of pressure on there, of course you can slip and cut your finger pretty badly. You understand why I'm not talking while I'm doing this. And if you don't, don't try it and talk. I've got no pressure going in on that, so I'm total control of the saw blade. There we go. All done. Actually, we might, um, I might move that around back over to where it was before. Give me a better, better shot there. Let's have a look. There you go. That's for Ron when I come back. Ah. I'm just catching up, just catching up. Brian, you keep it low. Oh, yeah, I've done, okay. From the batteries. Mm. Mm. Da -da I, did, I didn't say the marking gates were cheap, I said they were good. <laughs> Where do you come up with all this? So what? Do is mass cycle. <laughs> Don't get stressed. Yeah, the safest way is know what you're doing, Prunella, and just don't push it. Mm. 
<laughs> no, Jeff, I'm not doing that. I believe me. I might use the router, but I won't be on those little things. Oh, uh, dear. Okay. Ah. Uh, so now we'll mark the corners. With numbers. One, two, three, four, and we'll mark the bow ties. Now I've got a rough, a rough edge on one side, so I'll leave that up the top. That can be number one, number two, number three, and number four. Three, four. All right. Work out where you want them. Uh, get the get them as close as you can to equidistant, I guess. It's only aesthetically. So if you use the the waist of the bow tie, that's this part in here, as the middle, and have that where the mitre join is. Have that what the mitre join is, and then just whatever I'm using um, a combo square here. Actually, we could do it at 45, couldn't we? No, don't want to. There you go. Just get the corners the same distance away. <coughs> so that one's there. I can't get used to this putting stuff away business. And that one's there. Hold it down. Now you can use a, um, a pencil if you like, but I'm going to use a knife because I'm going to get a far better line. And hold it firmly. And trace around it with a knife. Be very careful when you come to these edges that you don't shoot past them. At least try not to. The same on the inside. And up to there. Now make sure you're fairly confident you got it all the way around. <coughs> sort of just in my throat again. And then when you take it off, you've got the outline of the bow tie. Might be an idea too, this just occurred to me. Mark <coughs> an edge. So there I'll put across and there I'll put across. So they're going to go back in the same spot. Oh, look at this. How good is this? Just rocked in. There you go. There's my grandson. This one, this is Noah. I had to think because I've got too many boys running around here. So that's it. Time for Smoko, everybody. Look what I've got. Am I spoiled rotten or what? He's a good boy, aren't you? Hmm? Yeah. You can say hi. Hi. There you go. You gonna have a scone? Or has Nan got some up there for you? He made them. Did you make them? Mm. High five. There you go. Look at that. Am I spoiled or what? Do you know how to make coffee? You ask yeah. Nan to teach you how to make coffee and, and then leave your room and you can walk down here with the coffee. Where have we gone? Uh, Hi again, Reg. <laughs> Belly can. Slugger. There you go. It's your name now. Slugger. Noah. Slugger. Slugger kid. <sighs> Look at that. Look at the way they just fall apart, will you? Where's the... Where's Scone cam. Here you go. That's it. Where are we? Whoops, not there. Scone cam. You just, look at that. 
How good is that? I don't know if I... We were just talking about being too fat. I need all them, you will be. I won't, but I reckon my little four-legged mate will be down here very, very soon. Don't waste them on your I don't, well, they won't face. be wasted, but I just don't know like if I... Butter as well. Yeah, where's the butter? Oh, you have to go get where's, butter for where's, a couple oh, of that, Oh, that won't be hard. God. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I tell you what. Oh, they're just out too. They're really warm and soft, aren't they? You can. Oh, you can. I don't know if you can see it, but there's actual steam coming off. One on that one. There's, can you see the steam coming off? Yeah, look at that. Steam coming off them. Oh, yum. You watch the butter melt. And, and Torby jam. And, 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 and fresh whipped cream. What? Since he's been off school... Since he's been off school, since, I don't go to school. Since Noah oh. has been off school, I'm teaching him how to do different things in the kitchen, like cooking, all that. But you've got to clean up your own mess. Yeah, that's the part he doesn't like, does he? No, he's not too bad. He's, he's pretty good. Is his brother out of bed yet? No. Oh, well, he's going to miss out on scones, isn't he? Yeah. Look at that. You want one? No. You don't? Well, what's wrong with him? No. You've got to eat your own cooking. That's it. Look at that. Excuse me, I'm having a break. We we should, when we had um, another channel called Room for Woodwork, we had cooking classes. Perhaps we should introduce it again. Yeah, maybe. Cooking, cooking the woodworking way, where you peel apples with spoke shaves and you crack eggs with hammers and it's good. It's good. Won't be long, you'll be taller than you. Oh, hang on, I'm going to put jam on there first, don't you? Wait. I'm only doing this so everyone goes, oh. Yeah. I am taller than her. Her. Don't push it, kiddo. Just <laughs> a tiny bit. Just a tiny bit. Yeah, but you're as wide as her. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> Not anymore. It's all right, I'm... I'm double dipping because I'm eating it, so I don't care. Oh, here comes the mutt guts. He's down here. Stay here with Papa for a minute. I told Uncle Steve that I'd let him know when you were on camera with Papa. Right. Oh, okay. That's it. Let me catch up. <laughs> you should see him. Is he excited or what? what? What do you reckon, Bob? What do you reckon? Look at that. That. That is. Yeah. Gentle. There you go. He doesn't eat them. Don't tell mum. He doesn't eat them. He inhales them. That's it. He inhales them. He doesn't eat them. Ah. Oh. oh, dear. Oh, dear. I've got to get one into me. And if I accidentally drop it. Mmm. <laughs> That's a mm. <laughs> No point in bending down to pick that up, I tell you. It's gone. Mmm. Oh, there you go. Oh, Steve-o. How you going, China? Steve just come on. He said he loves your shirt. There you go. Oh, dear. Hey, Mike. You're just in time for scones, mate. Cross-continental sort of. What design are you doing now, mate? Because what that dog you did is absolutely brilliant. Now, I've got to get this one into me. Can you go and make a cup of coffee? Oh, hang on. I'll see if steve -O wants to talk to you again. Oh. Can I tell him what, what we were talking about? I don't know. You tell me what you were talking about first. <laughs> Uncle Steve is a Buddha. Oh. Okay. Yeah, you should. Yeah, no, don't. Because he'll ring me up and give me a hard time. Mm. I still don't know how to make coffee, dog. Well, go up and then I'll show you. Okay. In my, in my Holden HK Monaro mug. Okay. There you go.
I've got to get back to woodwork now. Hey, Roscoe. How are you? Who else is snuck in here? Don't get caught of cream here often as <laughs> middle-aged brat, I tell you what. Oh, where's he gone now? <laughs> He's around this side. He didn't get anything that side. I haven't had me breakfast. If mum sees me giving you these, I'm going to be in trouble. Oh. There you go. Yeah, shh. Don't tell. Mmm. Yeah, it's all mad everywhere at the moment. Anyway, I'm putting that up there. And I'll really... No, Bob, you're not getting the rest of them. Stop following me. Got to get and mark these things here. Oh, she's a good, good woman, that girl. Oh, they were nice too. Oh. Mm. We've done good, eh, Bob? We haven't had breakfast yet, but we've done good. Okay. Enough of the frivolities. I've got to finish marking these out. Again, put, oh, we'll go all cams. What do you do, boom? Um, whoops. There you go. Put the centre line on the mitre and then just bring it down so the corners just touch your spacing mechanism, whatever you're using. As I said, it doesn't have to be 100% super accurate, but the neater you can get it, the nicer it's going to look. Whoops, I went a little bit far on that one. The trick is not to go right to the edge and then come back from the edge into the cut, which I didn't do on that. I shouldn't have those scones, I wouldn't have a nap now. If I was in Jeff's workshop, I would be in trouble because you're not meant to have food anywhere near your job or you get grease on it. Um, do that sign there, that sign there. Turn it around. Ah, uh, that's not the point. That's not the point, Brian. You know it's not right. Um, the woodworker that I really admire his his walk, um, his books, and I wasn't a fan of his furniture, but I'm really starting to get a different perspective on it now, and it's. Um, James Krenoff, he wrote a book called The Cabinet Maker's Notebook, A Cabinet Maker's Notebook, and then a couple of other books as well. And he always used to say, even where people don't see, it has to be right, because if they do look around there, they're not expecting it to be nicely finished. And, and not only that, you know yourself. <clears throat> I've got a friend that used to be a carpenter or builder. And he used to set all the screws on stud walls. No one would ever see them. Mark, if you're watching. No one would ever see them, but he knew that they were right. This comes down to pride in your work, I guess. Yeah. 
And the lucky last. Oh, I've got that. <laughs> Let me drink of water. <laughs> Crikey, that cream was rich. Now, this is interesting, really, because when, you, when you're doing woodwork and people ask you to do something and you give them a price, which is a multiplication of your hourly rate, and then they go, oh, but it won't take that long. And these streams, it really does bring home the fact that it takes time. There might only be woodwork. But it takes time. And I, if I was doing this job and getting paid, I wouldn't charge them for eating scones. Uh. What have we got? Oh, we've got Nan's mug. Super Nan's. I'm sorry, there you go. That's all right, darling. Yeah, actually, just put it there. That's your great grandma's mug, that one, isn't it? Hmm? Yep. So, there we go. Whoops, haven't done that bit there. So, did you enjoy making the scones? Yes. That's good. What are you making? Um, well, you know, Nanny's been doing those sayings. Have you seen those? Yeah. Well, this is a frame to take one of the sayings. Oh, okay. And that is a butt joint. No, not that sort of butt joint. Sorry. It means two bits joined like that with glue. Yeah. And it's not very strong. If I drop that on the ground, that would break into four pieces. But by putting these in here, it strengthens it so they won't break. So there you go, then you've learned something. Butterfly joints or bow ties, whatever you want to call them. Mm. Mm. All right, Dom, how many sugars you put in? Two. You're a good lad. See ya. Thanks, darling. See ya. You're welcome. Oh, I appreciate that. Oh. Okay, now I'll focus on that. Where are we? Where are you? Steve, Jeff, very true. Right, um, okay, yeah, we're in a we're in a special situation lockdown. Um, and what happened? My son, actually, the young fellas that was here, his, his dad, he's not very well, and he contracted pneumonia. And the doctor, the our GP, wanted to put him in hospital, but said he'd be better off being at home in isolation rather than in hospital given the current situation. But the GP said, I'll send him home on one condition. No one comes in and you don't go out for 14 days until he's been on his course of bio antibiotics and he's feeling better. So that's why we're in a lockdown. Um, so it was uh, not because of the normal procedural one, but it was uh, a family health issue. All right, let me get a router. Yay, router. Um, I'll use this one. Hello, darling. Hello. What? I've just got to come in and say good day to somebody. Oh, okay. I've got to say good day to somebody. Oh. And not Bella. Huh? Is he bum? No. Oh. To Trace, who's watching. Oh, hello. <laughs> are you, are you going to say anything? Are you going to write a comment? Guess what? I found a door handle the other day and I fixed the bathroom. It can now be locked. Did I tell you that? You did. That's all right. <laughs> I hope you're good, darling. And, um, yeah, that things work out and you can work out whatever is happening with work. These are family members that have lost their jobs and uh, we're just wishing them well in case you think I've gone off on a tangent. So... <laughs>
<laughs> there you go. I'm not really on a tangent. This, this not only is a stream, but it's a way to keep in contact with my family as well. So there you go. All right. Um, what do I want on this one? And Steve as well. Oh, there you go. And Steve as well. Whoops. Oh, that didn't sound very nice. What was that? Ah. Uh, so anyway, Rod, I hope that explains the situation here. Where is Rod? I can't find him. Ba -da -ba -da -bum. Mm. Good night, Julian. See ya. G'day, Panda. <laughs> yeah, it's all right. No, no, I'm pleased it's the backside. <laughs> now, where are we going up here? Ah. <sighs> Just jumped ahead. I was trying to catch up to where I am, and then all of a sudden, oh, 80 mil went to one person. There you go. Hi, Panda. Don't ask, Ray. We all go through phases and this is a phase, and after bringing up five boys, Sue and I thought, you just let them go through the phase. It ends quicker. Yeah, he is, Max. He's had a rough trot, but he's good, though. Oh, router alert. I, do I still get router alerts just when I'm using a trimmer? Is, is that warrant? Does that warrant one? Hi. Thanks, Brunella, I'll tell him that. Oh, I could be vacuum cleaner later on. Good morning, Dave Shed. Is that the Dave I think it is? As in Blue Mountains, Dave? If it is, welcome, mate. Lovely to have you in here. Or if you're a different Dave Shed, welcome as well. Oh. Okay, all right, well, it's going to be used as a router. <laughs> I don't know how deep I'm going to go. I can't find the one I really want. But anyway, we'll... Uh... Well, first of all, we'll check them out with a chisel. Hello, Bob. Yeah, we haven't had breakfast yet, have we, mate? We should do that very soon. Hear those honey eaters again outside. Oh, I tell you what, these are gonna these are gonna get a bit of a tickle up. When I've stopped streaming, they are as blunt as yesterday's stale bread. <laughs> the risk you run of doing this is actually um, splitting the mitre, so. But I want to get a defined cut in there. So if I'm genteel with it, it might be all right. Gee, where does the time go? It's incredible, isn't it? I don't want to go too hard. If I had my chisel, my carving chisel roll here, I'd actually use carving chisels to do this. But I don't, so I'll just use what I've got. Yeah, 
those honey eaters outside, do they're nice. You can always tell when I'm concentrating, can't you? I'm quiet. Whoop. I, I'm the apron maker. I, <laughs> I saw in the Susie last night about that, actually. She seems to think it's a good idea, so that's it. This might spawn a new industry. We'll start doing woodworking aprons. <clears throat> Chisel around the wrong way then. She be right. Oh. Have I done? Oh, I was going to say. Please tell me I've done three of them. Okay, and lucky last. Oh. Tell you what, it cramps your hand a bit. Hey MC, how are you mate? Oh, Randy, I'd like to have one of those aprons too. I use camo. Well, there you go. Actually, I bought some um, camo fabric oh, a couple of weeks ago now because I've got to make a new one for these. I've got a lot of plain fabric, so I would say most of them are going to be plain fabric if we do do them. But I've got these. Do you like these? Oh. Who, who was that, MC? Who was asking them about... Was that Mike? Hang on. Or was it Randy? Oh. Oh, Randy. There you go. Look at those. Custom made. These were custom made. I love them. Whoops. Camo eye muffs from George oh. and, oh, where's the other ones? Oh, I've got the full, they must be up in the other shed. I've got the other full ones um, that are camo, well, George did for me. Which is really, really good. I might give him a ring. Hang on. Have I got my phone? Have I got my phone? Ah. Uh, well, ring George up at I must. I like doing this. Da -dum, da -dum. There we go. I'll see if he's in. Generally, it goes to his message bank, but we'll see. George, how are you, mate? Yeah, good, mate. How are you going? Mate, I'm going well. Hang on, I'm going to turn the volume up. Um, you're live on a stream because I'm streaming every day and I was just using my eye muffs and I thought, I'll give George a ring. Cool. So can people still buy them online? You, you can still send them out and everything? Yeah, 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 definitely. Oh, that's good. And the G6s as well. I had a comment from someone the other day. They said, I'm intrigued by your um, safety gear. So I gave them the plug for your website, which is iMuffs. Anyone got any questions about iMuffs? Brian Shaw's just written, I love my iMuffs. So there you go. Nice, nice. That's what I like to hear. Yeah. <laughs> we were going to get together, George and I, at the Brisbane Wood Show, weren't we, mate? We were. On, on, on 
unfortunately got cancelled. Yep. So no, I decided I'd I'd stream every day. Um, and that's what we're doing. We're all doing woodwork. Yeah, nice, nice. I'm actually, uh, I've just restayed that Commodore Ute to keep myself busy. So, <laughs> cutting up. <laughs> have, you, have you run out of Land Cruisers? No, no, I've still got them. They're um, just sitting there waiting, waiting for me to do something to them. But, uh, yeah, I've got this Commodore, so I just quickly wanted to give it a spray job. And, um, yeah keep myself busy basically oh that mate, that's the main thing we just got to keep busy but when when it's all over we'll sit down and have that coffee together for sure mate for sure <laughs> all right mate well i'll let them know that i must are still available and um yep. i'll chat to you later on excellent have a good one Steve. all right george see you mate bye so there you go that's george from imuffs you can still get them Oh, on his website, imuffs.com, I think it is. Oh, thanks, Ray. Just put it up there. Oh, that was a uh, that was a project we did. We might even do another one of those later on if we get bored. That's Amboynia Burl. Uh, that's Blush Older on the head and Black Bean on the handle. There you go. And it's one of these ones that you just go, <laughs> I don't know if it'll do it or not. No, nah, it's been on there for too long. But it just slides on. It's got a two degree taper in the head. Um, another one that's, <laughs> that's been flogged, as you can tell. No, we, we might do that later on. There you go. All right, where am I up to? I've got to take these things out. Um, where's my eye mush? I'll put a bright pair of yellow ones on. Uh, oh, woodpecker. Oh, lovely. With all the nice bright colours, are you using, this is Mike, are you using um, stained, uh, dyed veneers or just pure uh, veneers? Um, there you go. Oh, uh, I just love to see the amount of people and conversations chat. Yeah, look, I think it's awesome, Silver. I really do. I, I'm just, yeah, I'm blown away. Um, I just think it's great and we can keep it going and support each other and get some ideas, get some woodworking done. Uh, Um, he's sorry, Max, I would have asked him that. Where do I buy all my different timbers from? I've collected them silver over 30 odd years and uh, to the extent I've got a very nice collection. So, you know, people say, where do you get your timber from? I say, in the shed next door. So I've got a couple of sheds full of timber which, and veneer, which is really, really nice. G'day, Derek. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone should have earmuffs. Oh, I'm, so I'm with you, mate. Um, now he's working on the Bluetooth ones. Uh, I can ask him. I'll, I'll, <laughs> oh, hang on, I'll ring him up again. I'll ring him up again. <laughs> we'll find out. Uh, bottom, bottom. <laughs> Not you again. Yeah, mate. Oh, look, that went crazy. One bloke said, everyone should have eye muffs. And then someone else said, when are the um, blue tooth ones going to be available? Well, we're, we're nearly there. Um, I reckon, I don't know, with all this coronavirus, it might slow things down a bit. But, yeah. Um, you know, maybe safe to say six months. All right. All right. No, that was it, mate. I just question just came up and I thought I'd get it straight from the horse's mouth. Yep. So I around six months, well. but they're on. They're definitely well. underway. Yeah, yeah, they're nearly finished. All right. So, yeah. No, nah, awesome so. stuff. All right, mate. Back to spraying <laughs> Commodores. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, mate. <laughs> Thanks, mate. See you, George. Bye. Bye. 
There you go. I hope that answers your question. <clears throat> Got to try your plaster and linseed trick to fill cracks. Well, linseed... Um, I prefer not to use linseed... Oh, no, in marquetry. No, 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 no. No, don't use boiled linseed oil in marquetry, mate. Because what happens, it um, dries and when you get a finish, you won't get the same finish. So, no, raw linseed oil or the other one I've used to great effect, which is the French way of doing it, is with uh, paraffin oil, which is a lot thicker. But what's going on here? There we go. Yeah, with paraffin oil. So try that. Okay. Oh dear. That's not going to work either. How about that one? That one will work. So I do like my other workbench that's got all the hold downs that stop it from moving. Okay. So I've marked that out. I've got a very, very fine um, router bit in there. And I'm going to go around the outside, staying within these chiselled lines that I've got. And we'll go all cams on this. So you can watch me do this one. And then you can see me do these ones. All right. Uh. Check to make sure the router switch is off before you plug it in. Make sure the wall socket's off before you plug it in. Turn that on, do a test. One, because this is such a small bit, I've only got about an eighth of an inch out. And I want to go down about 12 mil. So I'll just take this step by step. I'll have a sip of water. Suck it up, Brian. You can handle it. You're tough. Oh, dear, oh, dear. You're welcome, Derek. I'm just going to go up and grab a different pair of glasses because I need a closer pair to see that. So I'll be back in a tick. Play I Spy, chat amongst yourselves. I'll be back in a second. You're 
hop, hop. Okay, got me Mr. Magoo glasses on there. <laughs> you can't tell the difference, but I can. Oh, doesn't the world look sad? Okay. <laughs> oh, yuck. But at least I can see lines better now. It's a difference what two increases in um, enlargement will do for you. One more. <laughs> I gotta take those off. Oh, oh, that's better. I'll take one more uh, depth cut, then we can fit them in. Mm. Oh, dear. <coughs> that's better. Ah, oh. Pascal, welcome. Oh, good to have you in the workshop again. Where are we have the old Bob's back again, mate. Look, look, you can have me breakfast. I don't think I'm going to get around to eating it. Let me have some peaches. 
Mm. Eat that. You throw this up on the floor again. Mm. Yeah. Things you do for your dog, I don't know. Mmm. Okay. <laughs> I like that Prunella, the return of the bloodthirsty router. Oh dear, oh dear. Oh, he didn't still get you. Ah, yeah, dentistry noises, that's true. Horrible. <laughs> You're going to have to work harder than that, James. It's an easy one. Victor's Garage, yeah, we're making the, well, we're doing a lot of things with this part's a picture frame, putting um, strengthening ribs in the back in the shape of bow ties. Oh, you get a kickback on the little ones, don't worry about that, Max. Yeah, be nice. Got some good friends in Tassie. Gaza, if you're watching in Tassie. See you, Chad. Catch you later, mate. You're welcome. Right. All right. Oh, take a sip and another. Did you finish that? You're a good boy. Tell you what, you don't have to pre-rinse with you around, do you? Hmm? It's all gone. I do wish you'd learn to shut doors. I do. Oh, we've got that to do too. A lot of things to do. See, it's the little things like this that take so much time. Okay, we'll go one more, <coughs> one more cut depth, I think. Which, where's me, where's me cl clapperless? Here we go. No, <laughs> you're not getting any of those scones. You're fat as a fool already. Okay, what's that? So we go another. I was going to go down 12, but I reckon. No, let's go a tad more. We'll go down 8 mil. <coughs> oh, I hate this. This is what I wear for for marketry, Mike. They are very strong, but it's good for close work. Okay, that's eight mil. I think that'll do. We'll do that, then we'll clean them out, then we can start put, putting them in. Is that on? Still. Yes, good. Okay. Here we go, rock and roll. That. I'm feeling confident. I know I know I shouldn't be, but I am.
wasn't a bad up, just an up. Wrong one. Oh. Okie dokie. Up to one there. You're right, mate. Leave it there. Got a couple of um, dents there where they the uh, hold down bit in, but to get rid of them, all you got to do is spray a bit of water on it, like that. And we'll come back to that in maybe 15 minutes, and those dents will be out. So it's all good. What are you doing, Bob? Come on, let's go. Oh, hang on. Someone mentioned batteries. Let me check my batteries. They're going all right. Let me check this one up here. Ah, oh, they're good too. I, think I, I don't know what I've got in there. I might have Duracell in there at the moment. So they must be working good. Well, what I'll do next time, well, I just saw one and I saw, I'll move the camera. There you go. What a bum, buddy, dum. It's Steve, it, it's, it's. Oops. Wait a minute, let me shut that. Oh. But um... Well, sorry, my internet stopped from that. That's all right, you're back with us. That's good. You haven't disappeared up the country yet, MC. It's not the solar goes off, it's the solar, it's not enough power. Oh, thank goodness, I just got new solar power, Dave. Oh, although I haven't got a new bill yet, but I've got a new solar power. I got a Jenny too, but it's too noisy. No, actually, mine's a really quiet Jenny, but it's in the truck. Uh, where, you know, where the, oh, it's just, oh. Yeah, my Jenny, um, it's really quiet. It's 3.3 kVA, and you can hardly hear it run. It's a Pro Mac one. Uh, <laughs> a lethargic internet. Oh, no, that's interesting. Okay, let's go. Ah, clean these out. I should really, I don't know, do. I should really give these a bit of a, a strop. But I think they're okay. So now I'll clean these out. I will. I'm going to go and get my carving chisels. Hang on, hang on. <laughs> Here you go. <laughs> you can play ice by there. I'll be back in a tick. You can 
life? Hey, good old boy. Hey. Well, you sit in the sun then. Okay. All right. I'm back. Uh, where are we? No, I just, um, these need a bit of a brighten up, which I shall do. And I'll stop streaming, but I just want some really sharp ones. And for me, really sharp ones. Ah! <laughs> no, it didn't cut me. Went in. A carving chisels. Ah. Oh. You like scones, Jeff? Ah, uh, bring out the T8, mate. It's, it's actually sitting down here. Oh! Ah! Yeah, there you go. Oh! There's the T8. And she will get a good going over very soon. Now. Change glasses. Ah. Yeah, <laughs> that's what happened, Victor. I'm used to it. I've been married for a long time. I'm, I'm used to being ignored, but I appreciate that you did notice. There we go. That's what I want. With me, Mike. Isn't that a nice sound? A trip, uh, a trip, a trick with soft timber, particularly cedar, is if you get some real woolly stuff, what we used to call Syrian cedar, used to be really bad for it. It's like your granddad's best cardigan, oh, it was horrible stuff to use, is you get a piece of kerosene, a little bit of kerosene, and with a uh, cotton bud, and just put it on the fibres, and you will be amazed what a difference that makes. It actually swells the fibres up, and so when you are pairing, it... Um, makes it much crisper and then of course the oil just dissipates or the caro just dissipates i got to get my compressor fixed down here I tell you I do miss not having it That would be a job of the com <laughs> compressor, and I don't. <laughs> Have to blow it out, boy. Manually. Oh, you haven't come in again. There's nothing to wait. Oh, yes, there is just scones. You're not getting them. No. He must be lonely. You're lonely, Bob. 
<laughs> He's gone back out again. <laughs> Comes in. Oh, I know there's scones there. I'm going to work out a, an automatic closer on the door. Keeps the air conditioner working too hard. The door's open. A lot of woodworking is like watching paint dry, you know. I've got great little chisels that I'll show you in a minute for cleaning the bottom out of these stop joints. And they're the sort of chisels you don't use very often, but when you need them, They're the best things around. I think it's taken longer to um, oh, longer to do these uh, butterflies than it did to do the actual moulding. Perhaps I should have just whacked some staples in there with a staple gun. But where's the fun in that, Max? You wouldn't have found out how to do them. Whoops. A little bit too wide there. Okay. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> These are corner chisels. Don't see them very often. in there, right and left hand ones, and they're great for getting right down and cleaning the bottoms of things and corners out. The other thing which is good for this is the Old woman's tooth plane and Veritas have got, if I can find it, they've got a little river. Well, this is a, a router plane, right? This is a 71. But Veritas have a real smidgy one for getting in there and doing that. Wouldn't work on this one because the blade's not long enough, but. There you go. Okay, let's start putting these in and we'll see how we go. Number two, that goes there, that goes there. 
And what I do with these is you just, on the underside, all right, this is the rough side, it's going up, just cut a bit of a chamfer on there. Just the leading edge, it doesn't matter if it's jagged or not. But you just want that to have a little bit of a taper on it. That knife's not very good, is it? It's not real good either. I'm trying my pocket knife. Oh, there's going to be big sharpening coming up, I can tell. There we go. So you just cut a bit of a, an angle on there. Line all your marks up. If you, everything's going to plan, that should slot in there nicely. Uh, put a bit of glue in there. Oh, actually, I use hide glue, see, and that's what I did it with. I'll whack a bit of hide glue in there. And again, this doesn't matter if it makes a, a mess because it's going to dry hard and be easy enough to sand off when it's finished. There we go. That's one. Get a, what was that timber I threw in the bin earlier? Oh dear. There we go. Hold it. You know when it's home because it's got that dead sound. And there you go. The first one is in. Let's do the same to the rest of them. I can I can talk now. <laughs> Tomorrow's stream. Yeah, I should do that, but not only will it be boring for you, it will be extremely boring for me. Yidget, that's the wrong. Um, ba -dum -bum. <whistles> well, that one didn't work. I had that one up the wrong way. Best play, was it? The best laid plans of mice and men. I, I did that wrongly. So, all right, we'll leave, we'll, we'll leave that one till last because I muffed that up when I put the markings on. This one's good though. This one's good. Boom, boom, boom. No, 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 no. 
What do we do next? Oh, I know, we might decant some of that. Um, we'll start decanting that solution. And then I think we'll start making some... Uh, frames for the bottom of the boxes. Always something to do. Always something. On the lower. I don't know if I've stuffed it or not. What I did, I wrote number four on the top and number four here, but then I put the mark on the bottom. So I'm just trying to figure out the best way to get this to go in. I think that will be the best way. Let me just have a look. Yeah, all right. I'll we'll just put this one in under, upside down, it doesn't matter. Oh, why didn't I use this knife to start with? She blows. And that, when it's dry, is going to be very, very strong. So we put this over here to dry. Oh, we didn't get onto the chair today. Oh. Um, might just decant some of this stuff and see what it looks like. Oh, dear, let me get, get a couple of bottles. Oh, I did, um, I did add a little bit more steel wool to this yesterday, but it had half a kilo of steel wool in it. There's, poor oh, stinks. There is eight litres of vinegar and it was half a kilo or 250 grams of steel, a packet of steel wool anyway had gone in there and if you look there is no steel wool left and you can see what it does this is blackwood that has reacted with the tannin and turned the timber black so that's normal blackwood that's what it's like when it's been an iron sulfide solution overnight so we'll put that down there we'll put this up here And we'll decant some of it. Oh, let me put my chisels away first. Oh, there you go. That's a bit of trivia for you. This cabinet here, oh, crikey, I must have built that about 30 years ago, I think. That was the only thing, the couple who ordered the cabinet, that was the only thing they argued about in the divorce. 
the kids weren't a problem, the dog wasn't a problem. Everything else wasn't a problem, but that cabinet, that was, that was the problem in the divorce. So there you go. It says something, doesn't it? Uh, Okay, I'm sorry if I'm missing out. If any of that chat is to me, um, please repost it because I'm that far behind, I can't go back and catch up. So if there's a question you asked, uh, I know it's been presumptuous of me to think that anyone will want to talk to me, but <laughs> if you do, please ask it again while I'm doing it. Oh, there you go. Okay, here we go. What I've got here is just ordinary coffee filters. Nothing flash, nothing special. As you can tell, I've had them for a fair while. And where's the mug? Oh, here we go. And we're just, and I'm not drinking it, but yeah. We'll just see how we go. This is going to be a long process, isn't it? You can leave it like that. <laughs> Sorry about the noise. You can leave it like this if you like. I personally like to just put it through a filter and put it into bottles. Then it's not quite as bad and I think it's going to take forever. So what we'll do, I'll keep on topping this up as we go and we'll move on to something else. Uh. <laughs> None of us are made. Why be normal? That's what I say, Victor. Darkwing Duck. I like Darkwing Duck. He was on, he was Daffy Duck, wasn't he? Uh, Steve, how deep does the ebonizer soak? Ah, oh, click. It depends. That, well, I'll show you what we'll, we'll cut that. That doesn't go in terribly deeply oh, because it was just soaking. But I've, um, it's a nice black too. I had, no, don't look at them because you're not getting them. I've had some that I put in a pressure pot and that's what I was going to do today too. Start building the pressure pot or I'll show you what I want to do. And uh, if we don't get around to doing it today, we'll do it tomorrow. There's always enough time to do stuff. Okay, let's find out how deep the ebonizing goes. This has been in the bucket overnight. So it doesn't go all that deep. Although with the um, pressure pot, I've had it go into about a millimetre. So a pressure pot is a lot better um, for my way of thinking. And I'm over here, why am I talking to nobody? So I like using the pressure pot. I put it on about 50 psi for about a day or 24 hours. And that seems to do the trick quite well. Yeah, this is gonna take forever. All right. See, what's, uh, what sort of went off on a tangent like normal? <laughs> ha! Mate, that's all right, I'm used to it. How long does that mix up? Years, Randy, years. It, it won't go off, it's vinegar. All it is is vinegar and steel wool. And you can see, I'll wait until this lot actually goes in, then you can see it does look a bit cleaner. Oh, 
Oh, I love 80s music. I have that bashing out here all the time. Oh, dear. Okay, Randy, how long does it last? We'll answer that one. Oh. <sighs> yeah, look, um, that's the idea. Who said that one? Was that was that that asked me about Debaka? Um, yeah, you have to be reasonably careful sanding it back. What I would suggest you do, and I do this on, on jobs, in fact, we'll do it on the picture frame tomorrow. I wet timber down, maybe anything up to six times. Really give it a good larrup of water and then sand the grain off, do it again, sand the grain off, do it again, sand the grain off. And eventually you'll wet it and there won't be any grain rising at all. There shouldn't be too much grain rising on that picture frame actually because that was done with a hand plane and when you hand plane you get very little grain raised. The main reason you get grain rising when it's wet is because you've used a sander and you've abraded the surface. You haven't sheared it off. Hello my darling. Oh I better take them other scones up too because he keeps sitting here looking at it. He's dribbling all over the place. Over there on the table Oh, saw. okay. Mm, here you go. Yeah. That's all right. So, what did Steve have to say? Or you tell me later. Okay, all right. <laughs> it's all good stuff. Uh, uh, yeah. Thanks, son. Oh, I'm still drinking my coffee. Mmm. Oh, that's good. Ah, good, the itchies. Ah, oh, pressure pots are very handy. They are, look, people get panicky about them and quite frankly, I knew nothing about them, um, oh, apart from spray painting, which I've been doing for, crikey, over 40 years. Um, and people get very pedantic about, oh, it's dangerous and it's got to have this, they can explode. I really, I mean, I won't give you a 100% guarantee, but I'll give you a pretty stern guarantee, they won't explode. They will blow the ring out if they've got too much pressure or the ring's ruptured or whatever. Um, and the other thing is, I copped a lot of flack when I started doing pressure ring because people were saying, oh, this is dangerous and that's dangerous. And what I've done, which makes common sense to me, a lot of people will uh, pressurise their pressure pot and then they leave the um, compressor connected. So if in the very, very unlikely incident of a regulator failing, the compressor will just, you know, keep going, but it won't exceed what the capacity of the compressor is, which normally is about 120, 130 PSI. So all I do is I just pressurise mine to whatever pressure I want, which is 50, 50 PSI I generally use, and then I disconnect the compressor. Ah, but it'll leak. It won't. If you've done it properly and sealed it properly, it will not leak. So there you go. Okay, you can see that now. See, it's a lot cleaner. And look, if anyone did drink it, it wouldn't kill them. But they'd stop before they had too much, I'll tell you, because it's straight vinegar. It just looks nicer. All right, well, what I'm going to do is I'll continue with that exercise, but I'll move that out of the way and we'll start making frames up for the bottom of the boxes. Yeah, that, that's not bad. And you have a look inside, you can see all the extra muck that's been collected by the filter. If we go there. Oh, good on me. There you go, it just collects all the rubbish that you don't really need. So it is good. <sighs> now you think about it, vinegar, you have vinegar in all sorts of things and you've got iron in your blood and that's it. 
Okay. Oh, I'll just leave there. Put all these things up. Oh. I'll just move that tourmic out of the way because I'm going to thump myself otherwise on it. We should ring the guys from Tormek one of these days too and find out how they're travelling. That's me. That's me. Mr. Magoo glasses, I'll take them up to the top shed so I can at least see. Oops. Those I'll put there because I'll put them away later. That goes over there. This goes there. Get rid of that. So I, I use a lot of things in woodworking that you really wouldn't think was woodworking. Coffee filters, vinegar, mortise and pestle. And just in case you're wondering, no, she hasn't got a mortise and pestle back. And I'm not taking it back because I'm going to use it down here. Are we there yet? Are we there yet? All these will do. That's the last thing. Oh, we were going to make a top for that too. We might still have time for that. I don't know. If not, there's always tomorrow. Oh, dear. Oh, I might, might even do a stream of me pulling the compressor a bit. See, you go. That'll be exciting. I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to do it though. What did I say we were doing? Stand for the boxes. There you go. All right. Bring this stuff over here. Wherever it be. Oh, that's handy. Where'd it go? Wait a minute, wait a minute. I left it out here in the machinery shed. No. Oh, I bought it in. Oh, here it is. Ah, here we go. This is all Queensland walnut. And this is Queensland walnut. So we might, might um, so I've got to put the edging on one box if I can find the box that needs the edging. It's interesting, where did it go? Here it is. Okay. Got to put solid edging on this one and then we'll make the stands out of that stuff. Oh. I'm tired, breakfast tea when I'm da, 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 da. Oh, you're still on a coffee ban. Just for you, Prunella, I'll have a sip. Mmm. Hope you enjoyed that because it's cold. Oh, you're right, you're right, MC. Living's dangerous. I mean, honestly, you wouldn't get out of bed and then you'd have the chance of the ceiling falling on your head. If you didn't get out of bed, I'm just checking these mic batteries. That's all. Got me paranoid now. Oh, that's all good. Make sure this one's all good. Okay, I'm down to one bar on that, which means I should be able to finish the stream. All right, so what I do here, first of all, is I put solid edging around the top. Then when that's dry, I put solid edging around here. Let's go there. 
There you go. First of all, I put solid edging around the top here. Then when that's dry, I'll put solid edging down here. And then I put the solid edging around here, which actually fits between there. So let's do the top first. Let me get some masking tape. And what we'll do, oh, isn't that marvellous? I knew I, I put that there. I'm not going to be going over there. Yes, I am. I'm over here using the guillotines. Let me you move the T8 out of the way. Oh, dear. And the carving chisel's going to sit over there. That chopping board will finish off tomorrow. We can go there, we can move that stuff. We can go there and we can go there. Bada boom. Okay. Now we'll spin this one around. Uh, and you can see that. How does that go if I go that way? That's good. All right. So, what I'm going to do first is mark this off. It's a bit woofy. Some stuff that's a bit straighter. There you go, that's straight. So, first of all, I want a 45 degree. So, I'm going to go over here and cut a 45 degree angle on this and make sure my thumb's not in the way. Okay. Oh, you, you didn't see that, did you? I'll do it again in a tick. <coughs> I'll put that up to go there. Bring that around here. Come in a bit further, maybe. There you go. All right, so I've put that up to there. So this corner is right on this corner here. And then I put a little mark. There. So that mark there is where the other corner has to go. So if we go there, you'll see me do this. Um, that out there. <clears throat> and it's going to be alright. Okay, so I had to cut that to length, hence I've got the same angle on both sides, but that's fine. Now I turn that around and place it in there. And I want the blade to finish where that nick is. So what I do, place it in there. And bring it down just so the blade touches that and I think I don't know, I think, ah, oh, bum. That's going to be too short. That's all right, we'll use this bit. I didn't allow enough wastage. So we'll just do that again. Uh, 
Okay. I'll just mark that out again. Bring it down. Let's see if I can show you. A guillotine cam, hey? Wouldn't the French love that in the revolution? Just let me know if I leave me thumb there, will you? Okay, so I'll bring it down so the blade just goes into the corner of that cut that I made. Everything's good. Then I move the, the head away and then bring it in a fraction of a cut at a time. And it should be one more in there. Now that's cut it right up to that mark. We'll see. And there you have it. It's up to that corner and it's up to the other corner. Now, if these are the same, which they should be, all I have to do now is set the guillotine to this length. See how this goes. So I've got a fence here or a, a ga gauge. It goes like that. And then I slide. This right up to where are we? Here you go. Slide that up to the blade, then that's where it's going to cut. So hang on to that, and then I move this clamp there up to it. Tighten that down. So that's it. I can cut as many lengths as that as I like and it's going to be identical for every cut. But see, I'm only doing one of this particular one even though it's, it's good to be able to get them so they're exactly the same. It's nice to know you can do repetitive cuts. So here we go. Pull out of here. Yeah. Chomp. Chomp. Chomp, that's one end, then I slide it up to that fence, move the head away again and come back in. And there I have it. And that should fit quite nicely there, which it does. So that's those two. Now I've got to do the end bits. Uh, that I can use for a different bit. Place this on there. Make sure you're right on the corner. Make 
make a mark. Same thing. Back over. I've only got to make two of these as well. So I'll just work up to that mark. Got to concentrate here. And that should fit there. So if we put both of those together, it should be a nice, good fit. And the same on this end, yep. Both good. So I reset the bar to cut those, Oop. slide the fence up, slide this through, move the cutter head away, and away we go. There you go. That's how easy it is to cut a frame. So now we'll glue these in. Glue's starting to get a little bit thick, so I might just put a little bit of water in with it. You'd be right. All good. How do you put duck and chicken together, Brian? <laughs> See you, Randy. Thanks again for the membership. Really appreciate it. Okay, here we go. Have a good night. Let's go. There you go. So you put it in, smooth it along, grab one of these pieces. Try not to get it on the corners just yet because it could it could dry before you actually get to putting the corner bit on. Now what I do particularly with high glue is I do what they call a, a rub joint and if you go like that all of a sudden it'll just stick. You've got a little bit of time to play with it but not much make sure it's okay there okay there masking tape tension roll it over put it down there tension roll it over push it in tension Roll it over. You can do sides. I, I like working my way around. It doesn't really matter, but then you can put glue on the edge, on the corner there. Make sure it gets in there nice and nice and thickly. Grab a corner piece, do that edge, down there, then the face. 
And again, rub joint, put it in. A bit of a rub. You can feel it actually congealing underneath you and then all of a sudden, bang, it just locks in. Make sure this one's okay here. Yeah, I can live with that. No, that's not bad. Masking tape. Put it on. Pressure. Pull it down. Whoa! <laughs> Don't worry about it. Don't we spare no expense here. There you go. Push it on. Pull it down. And we'll go for another one. Push it on. Pull it down. Now the other long one. Just make sure that it's it's a good fit and it doesn't hang off the other side too much. And if it does, now's the time to trim it down. Glue in there, glue on the corner bit. There you go. Yeah. Bob would love this. Sloppy. There you go. Pop it in, give it a wiggle. Just like, and it's amazing how quickly, and all of a sudden it'll just lock. You can you do it with PVA as well. Not quite as pronounced because PVA has a different drying uh, procedure than the hide glue. I mean, how easy is this? You're not using any clamps. You're not messing around or doing anything like that. Your last bit, this, this is when you've got your fingers crossed because it should fit. And if it doesn't, you've got to really quickly make adjustments. Okay, now if you look at that, I'm about a millimetre out, which means I've just got to cut this back by about a mil. I'll quickly go over here and do that. And that can happen for any number of reasons. It could be the box isn't quite out of square or um, one of these pieces might be a bit longer than it should be that you can't see by eye. And then if you take too much, which I most likely will here, you've got to quickly make another one to match. No, nearly there. Just got a smidgen to come off, and I think we're in business. Oh, too much. All right, we'll use that for something else. Now you've got to be quick. Hello, Bob. No, Mum took it all up to the house. She did. She took it all up to the house. Well, it's always good to have a little bit of extra stock on hand, ready to go for these little trifling upsets to your day. Oh, that is so maddeningly close. But unfortunately, if you take two hairs off, it's oh, not good. Whew. 
if I had a beading box set up, I'd do this with a chisel. But I don't. It's nearly there. Don't you hate it when you go, oh, I'll just take one. No, I'll just take one more. There we go. Okay. Now that's right. So we haven't got time to dilly-dally. We've got to get that glued in, do the corners. down there. And that bit that was too small, don't throw it away because we're going to use that on the other bits. Isn't it good to see people make mistakes? All right, now push that in. Get your tape on it. Now that'll um, sit like that. Oops, put some on that. Just trying to get those corners in nice and sharp. There you go. All done. So that will wait until tomorrow, that'll be dry. And then what we'll do is put the upright ones up in here. Now, I, normally I wouldn't do that on a normal box if it was a solid timber box, but this is plywood, so it's not going to move. So that's why I can put a solid timber edge up there. We'll do that one tomorrow. All right, let's get on doing a couple of frames. I'll have a chat first. Oh, where are we up to? See you, Randy. Oh, I've said goodbye to Randy, haven't I? There we go. Um, yeah, the old thumb cutter. Yeah, that's it. For the, those of you who wonder what Brian's talking about, um, that, that thumb there is at a bit of an angle. I was watching what I was cutting. I wasn't watching where my thumb was. And... And that was owner-operated. <laughs> I cut my own thumb off. It was no, no mistake with the router or anything. It was, it was quite funny. I went up and saw Sue. And I was, she said, you're going to the hospital? I said, all right. And I went to get in the car. She said, what are you doing? I said, oh, I'll drive down. She said, no, you're not. And I passed out. And then when I came to, I'm lying on the garage floor. And I said, yeah, good call. You drive. <laughs> oh, dear. Still... Ah, uh, uh, -dum 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 -dum. yeah, it was. It was a bit like that. Ah, uh, all right. Now, I'm going to make these things here. These these are easier to make because you haven't got so much of a tolerance with them. Because oh, excuse me, because the box sits on them. I can do this without everything falling down. There you go. The box sits on them like that. So the beauty of that is you can fudge. If it's not quite right, you can manip where are we going? You can manipulate the box to fit on there. So that's what we're making now, these things here. So what we'll do is get a 45, oh dear. Have a look at the nicest edge, because some have got a little bit of a tear out on the um, thicknesser. So have the nicest edge pointing outwards, and then do a 45, like that. 
I think this one's right because I measured that before. I'm hoping it's right anyway. Uh, yeah, that's not too bad. Yep, all right. So we'll use that as the measurement. And we'll go to there. Come in there. All right, I'll just double check it on that one here. These were made years ago. No, same, same, so that's good. All right, so what I'll do, I'll, um, I'll make one frame so you can see how I make them and then we might, yeah, we might wrap up um, and I'll make the rest of them tomorrow. Oh, uh, sorry later on so we'll be ready to rock and roll tomorrow but let's we'll still go we'll get these ones done first so i've got these machined there for the long ones i should get two out of each of those and then the shorter ones i should get the ends out of so put that one there that one there where's the one that i just drew on here we go, that one and that one. Okay. <clears throat> so, smaller one. This is where it's really great to have that ability to do multiple cuts the same. But I'll change, I'll change these, but when I'm doing them um, off stream, I'll just bang through them real quick. Okay, here we go. Look, it depends on the timber too. This is this is really nice timber to cut, as you can tell. It's I wouldn't say it was super solid, it's very high in silica, but it gives a nice clean crisp cut. which is what we're after. So there's one. We'll just see if that's the same size as this. And if it is, we are in business. Mm. I might just take a whisker off it. about two whiskers. Beautiful. Schmicko. Run that up to there, run that mitered fence. The other one in, move the head away, Whoop. move the head away a bit further, a bit further again. 
Okay. That's those two done. And now we do the long one. Well, I hope you're enjoying the different varieties of machines. I mean, yesterday we were cutting mitres with um, a mitre saw and now we're using a picture frame as guillotine. There's all sorts of jobs, all sorts of tools for all sorts of different jobs. Let's just see how that goes for length. Maybe just a little bit off of that. I know why it's out. It's out because I'm using a thicker piece of timber, or not thicker, but wider. And being wider, there you go, that's good. It uh, puts your measurements out just a little bit. Okay, so I'll move that up to there. Tighten that. Slide that into there. Let's change the camera around. Okay. All right. So there's our four bits. But you can see how having that fence set up, you can just barrel through and do 50 components at a time if you, if you need to. Um, so I'm looking for. Don't know, it might be that one or the other one. Let me have a look see. Uh, da -da -da -da. 109 I want, 109 that's it. I keep my rubber bands, there's a fridge down here, I keep my rubber bands in the fridge and they last so much longer. Okay, in keeping with the boxes I'm going to do these in high glue. Uh, let's go here. Here we go. And we just glue them up. So you got glue on this edge and glue on that edge and make your frame up like that. Get your rubber band. Let's see, I might try this one. This one might. That might go to it's, it's gonna be tighter. We'll see. We will see how it goes, if not I'll use a weak, oh, a bit more up than that, don't need those. Use a bigger one. Uh, 
There you go. And you feed it into the top rubber bands there. Push this dog down. Get the rubber band, push this dog down. And there you have it. Hopefully. If you can, every chance is going to explode. No, there we go. Pull the corners over the corner. Very, very carefully. There you go. It is glued up. And you just leave that until the glue dries. And because it's got even pressure all the way around, that means it's going to be square all the way around. Don't you love the way I've got confidence? <laughs> I don't know if it is or not. There you go. All the way around. So there you go. There's another little trick for you. Oh. Oh, no, 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 no. Where are we going? I wish I had times on this. I could find out how backwards I was. Uh. <laughs> yeah, I was. <laughs> oh, dear, oh, dear. The trouble is that it's pretty repetitive work and those shop accidents happen. That's true. As soon as you find your mind wander, stop what you're doing. Oh, yeah, look, I think a lot of that, what you just said there, Ray, I don't know how long ago you said it, people don't realise the way they're doing things isn't safe. I, I disagree to a point. If you're used to doing something a certain way and you know, look, for example, cutting those uh, bow ties or, or uh, butterflies out on the bandsaw, that was perfectly safe. Had I not been experienced, had I not known what I'm doing, had I had a lot of noise in the workshop, I agree, it wasn't safe. But from people that have never used the saw before, they go, oh, that's scary, but it wasn't. It was perfectly safe because I was in control of what I was doing. Mm. So there you go. And I, I've got a, a mate that, oh, I, I get shivers up my spine every time he uses a jointer. But there you go, that's what he's used to. Uh, Steve, did the router out the corners of that box? Did you router out the corner? No, I haven't routed out the corner of anything. Corners of what box? Wombat, Steve, did you router out the corners of that box? I don't know what, which one. Oh! My TV's just gone off. Hang on, I'm blind. Wait a minute, let me let me turn the back on. Eh, must be Sue. She she's playing with it. She says, get out of there, you've been on too long. Uh, whoop, I'll just level that one up. And I've got a little bit here that I'm gonna put them through the sander anyway to um, level them up. Uh yeah, I think so, Brian. Very true. Yeah, do something else. Go and have a coffee. <laughs> oh, did I? Um, no, actually, I did those on that one I put the sticking on. I did that on the table saw. I set up uh, 8 mil depth. What I do, if I want an 8 mil um, cut, I set the saw depth to just over 8 mil, maybe 8.5 mil. And then the fence depth is at 8mm. So when I'm actually getting a cut, 
I'm actually incising into the box. So I, instead of having a straight, clean 90 degrees, I've got a 90 degree, but there's a lead in into the top of the box top and also into the side of the box, and that's as a glue channel. That's something I've just developed myself. And then if I do put too much glue in, I don't get a hydrostatic lock and the uh, solid edge popping out. It's a nice little channel for the excess glue to go in. So there you go. Oh dear, all right, that's it. We didn't do everything I said, but we certainly did a lot of it. Um, bow ties are done, started on that, done solid edging on that, decanted some of the um, ebonizing fluid, did that. Uh, cut those, the bits of the heart. Oh, I'll tell you what I didn't do, which I'll, I'll do one, just to show you what I'm going to do. I see if I can find them. Where are they? Where, where, do, I, where do I put all them hearts? Buddy, did you? Here they are. Okay. This is what I'm going to do on these is, oh, okay, what I'm going to do because I'm going to router out just a round over on the top of these hearts before I flock, my biggest concern is that when I put the enamel on to do the flocking, it's going to overspray onto the veneer. Now, normally that's not an issue, but this is very thin veneer, and if I sand it to get the paint out, I can go through the veneer. So, what I thought, because that's what I do sometimes think, here we go. Oh, dear. To make it easier all the way around, I'm actually, can I do better than that? Here we go. No, it's not what I want. There we go. I'm actually going to glue newspaper on to the front like that and then clamp it. <coughs> so we'll do that. And then what happens, I'm not going to glue it all on, but I'm just going <coughs> to do this. just around the edge of the heart, about that much. I'm just going to put glue. Oh, this is high glue. I wouldn't recommend you do this with PVA. In fact, I'd say don't do it with PVA. And then I'm going to put paper, newspaper, over the top of that and then put it in the press here like that and tomorrow where that um, glue was is going to be set and the, the newspaper is going to be hard on there. That means that when I go to router it, when I router it the newspaper is going to be crisp, it's going to t be taken away as if it was just a piece of timber. And then I've got a glue joint with paper all the way around that I can then spray the enamel on and do the flocking. When the flocking's dry, I rip the paper off, dampen that newspaper and it'll peel off or just sand it off. So that's what we'll do. So that's it, I did most of the things I wanted to do. 
Oh, dear idea. <clears throat> uh, yeah, flocking will do. Oh, that'll be... I reckon Monday we'll end up doing flocking. I use a lot of masking tape too, Prunella, I really do. No, it's easy to get off. You will see, my dear, in the coming days. All right, well, that's it. Thank you once again, one and all. <laughs> oh, crikey, look at the time. Oh, I'm going to go and have a big nanny nap. Um, yeah, well, I hope you got something out of that, and I hope it filled your day and gave you something to think about and maybe try at a later stage. Don't forget, please, I can't stress it enough, if you've got some questions, ask me. If you want to see a demonstration, ask me, and we'll see what we can do. I'm going to have a crack at finishing off that branding iron maybe today if I do a video and we can watch it tomorrow. If not, I'll do it tomorrow and we'll watch it the next day. There you go. So this is Steve pulling the shed door down and saying once more, thank you one and all for your company, your chat, your suggestions, your energies. I really appreciate it. And uh, those of you that joined up the Woodworking Masterclass channel, thank you so much. It means a lot. If you enjoy what you see and you haven't subscribed, I'd really appreciate it if you smash that subscribe button. And uh, this is me pulling the shed door down saying, remember to keep it sharp. But more importantly, keep it safe. Look after yourself. Be kind to each other. Be considerate of others as well. And I look forward to having your company in the workshop at this workbench tomorrow for more fun, frivolities, woodwork and chat. Till then, good night, good afternoon, good morning, good day. See ya. Bye for now. Thank you.